we were the last year of, of the grammar school, uh, in a very famous grammar school in, in Wales, which was known as where many of the famous Welsh rugby players went to. Jonathan Davis, Carwin James, Gareth Davis, Barry John, some, some really sort of world-renowned um, Welsh legends, really, and rugby legends. Bit of a rabble, really, but sort of, you know, some really good times looking back at this and looking back at some some friends in, in that class that, um, you know, became best friends and became friends for life, really. Um, and hindsight is a wonderful thing, you know, knowing you know, if, if I'd have told my friends that I was being bullied in school, then it had probably ended a long time sooner than it did. It wasn't a horrible day in, day out. You know, there were days when I said when the, when the bully wasn't in school or, or he wasn't picking me for a period of time or I could avoid him. Sometimes you look back at these photos and when I look at the whole school photo and I see the picture of the bullying himself, that sort of brings back that sort of sick feeling when you, you go to school in the morning and you have a horrible feeling in your stomach of being scared and not wanting to go to school and your know, mum would say to you, um, like enjoy school tonight and I'll see you tonight, like you know, and, and I'd murmur under my breath, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tonight if, if I'm still alive. That was the horrible feeling you went to school with. I suppose probably looking back now as well, it's just something I wasn't really aware of at the time, I'm probably really aware of now, that, that that's probably when I sort of suffered a first experience, sort of some, some mental health issues, I, I guess. It, it had an impact of, of sort of having to lie because to hide that I was being bullied. And, um, and you would do things which you were sort of brought up not to do, you know, I was brought up to be, to be honest and to respect people. And there I was then lying to, to my mum and dad that I'd been to school and, and lying that everything was, was all right. You felt at times, I guess, that if I sort of ended my own life, that that, that was the only way to get away from the pain of bullying, or on other occasions, it was a case of being so scared of what the bully would do to you, that he would do something so bad to you that it, that, it, that could end your life. So there is no doubt that experience that difficult time in school, being bullied, and then experiencing that difficult time in dealing with my sexuality and dealing with the mental health issues and, and the depression and stuff that, that came with that time of when I you know, did something that I would regret for the rest of my life when I was 26 years of age, where I left a note from my mum and dad and said I couldn't carry on living anymore and, and attempted to, to take my own life. And if I hadn't been found by people looking for me another 20 minutes, it had been, been too late. I wouldn't be here speaking to you today. And that's something I have to live with for the rest of my life and something that I will, will regret for the rest of my life. And looking back now with, with life experiences, I should have learned from that first experience of being bullied that to deal with issues in your life, you have to accept there are issues and, and, to, and to seek help to, to deal with them. And, and the experiences, those bad experiences, I've, I've, you know, I, I've put in, into good stead today in, in, in dealing with, with the pressure of being you know, a, a, an international referee and refereeing some of the biggest games in the world. And, and also the fact that you're an out gay person as well, and knowing that there's still homophobia is, is, is you know, is there in, in all walks of life and within sports still. And social media is there to, to show you that it is still there. Talking about them now in, in the macho world of rugby, openly like this, is, is, is not easy. Um, and it sort of churns up those memories which sometimes you just rather forget about. I think being an anti-bullying ambassador is probably one of the best plaudits and credit you could have as a young person in school, I believe. It's not myself and the others like myself who speak out about it who can really make the difference. It's you as an anti-bullying ambassador that really makes a difference. The people who really stand up to the bullying and help those around them who are being bullied. And if you are an anti-bullying ambassador within your school, then you can be really, really, really proud of yourself because you really will make a difference to a young person's life who really is finding it difficult to live with at the moment.
In the UK, 10 million children are going back to school this September. Over half of them will be affected by bullying. You can change that by helping us train an anti-bullying ambassador in every school. Text ANTI18 followed by one pound to 70070 to donate now. Head to backtoschool.antibullyingpro.com to find out more. This campaign is powered by the Diana Award.